This week on Sailing Sweet Ruka, we sail to four different bays. I untangle the propeller. We attempt our narrowest entry yet. We discover something exciting inside this blue hole. And Curtis assesses some engine trouble. I'm Kate. This is Curtis and Roxy Hello, the dog. Everyone. This is our roaming home Sweet Ruka. One year ago, we quit our jobs, bought a boat, and plan on sailing around the world without going through the canal. You heard me right, Cape Horn and the Cape of Good Hope. Click subscribe and come along for the ride. Previously on Sweet Ruka, we enjoyed the Queen's Bath and found a fun blowhole. <laughs> this week we explore the skinny island of Eleuthera by hitting four different bays, the first of which is called Hatchet Bay, a well-known hurricane hole. Our excitement for the tricky entrance causes unexpected problems. Keep watching to find out. For all in this, I stand alone. Show me where the Indian goes. Honest, honestly don't. I should be the last to know. We're all in this. It's gonna be freaking wicked, eh? Show me where the ending goes. Oh, I think I can see a rock sticking out of the water on the left hand side of the front. Okay. What's the depth? Okay. We made it through the narrow entrance free and clear until it was time to anchor. We had been towing a fishing line in hopes of catching dinner. But with all the excitement when it was time to anchor, we ended up backing over our own line! The engine glowed. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. You can quite tell. Alright, I'm, I'm gonna loosen this guy so you can pull on that, on uh, this side of the line. You know. Got some of it. Good. Uh, was the line, it kind of stuck, so. Was the line cutter getting it? He's like, what the heck? We're all in this. What do you got there? Is it a propeller? Is it cut? It's cut. Oh, okay. But I say you can cut it without cutting it anymore. Sweet. After the unexpected stress and a lot of extra swimming, we were ready for a couple of cold beers, but also planned on heading to the market. However, that's not what happened. We're in Hatchet Bay in the Bahamas. We wandered down the streets looking for a spot with cold beverages and stopped for a second to see the Atlantic Ocean. We stumbled into a bar where some guys were playing pool. It was a national holiday in the Bahamas known as Boxing Day, and a couple of beers turned into an all-day extravaganza of being fed at multiple parties across the island thanks to the generosity of the locals at the bar. We hopped in their car and started on our adventure. Oh my god, look at that. Oh cool, yeah. It's rare we get to be in a car. Oh, nice. yeah, Boxing Day, man. I gotta get a picture of this grill. Yeah. And you. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Look at this. Yeah, buddy. Oh Check my God. Look at this. Check it out. In the balls. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> wow. Buddy. I'm getting a picture of all that. Yeah. Oh man. my God. Oh yeah. The grill master. We drove around to multiple parties after a little day drinking and billiards. They offered us smoked barbecue and local desserts such as guava dub. Everyone we met treated us like family and made us welcome. Hey babe, what you doing? Applying cortisone cream to my mosquito bites. When your mosquito bites have mosquito bites, that's when you know. But we've been pretty good with the screens. The bites don't happen on the boat, it's when we're adventuring. And we don't wear bug spray, which is what happened when we decided to go to the market and then spent six hours being showed around town by a local. So question though. Yes. Are they worth it? Oh my god. Like right now, if you're asking me, <laughs> it's definitely, I mean, I would say yes still, but, but all I can think about is itching. It would take too long to count them, so. So don't count them. Put them out of your mind. 
Until okay. next time, mosquitoes. What Until are we gonna... next time. <laughs> we only stayed a short while in Hatchet Bay as we headed off to Governor's Harbor to get some much needed supplies. Sadly, we chose not to sail as the wind was directly on the nose and we wished to move quickly to accomplish our task. And Curtis gets to practice a little boat yoga too. So we got the engine oil we need to do our oil change. Got ourselves two gallons of Castrol Heavy Duty 15W40, which I think is about the best you can get around here. So here we have Curtis's ass. So we're in Governor's Harbor here. This is the spot where we park our dinghy. Lock it or lose it, they say. And we're off. We're gonna go back out to the boat. We're gonna work on an oil change. Hey, how's it going? Today we are changing the oil. And what I'm doing right now is I'm using a little pump with a drill. This hose goes down the dipstick tube of the engine. When I do the drill, that sucks oil from the bottom of the engine and then out into this little jug right here. It's not a fast process, but it gets the job done. And that smoke, we're gonna stop for a second. The drill's probably getting a little hot. We got all the old oil out, and now we have to put the new oil in. The joy of working on boat engines is that there's never enough space to do exactly what you want to do. So, red Solo cups today. If you guys have any tips at home, this is a Yanmar 4JH3-TE engine. I'd love to hear any tips or comments. Fill us in on the comments below, please, please. We quickly leave Governor's Harbor, sailing jib only to try and catch up with our friends on their Garcia Allure design called Sargo. You may recall we met Sargo all the way back in Provincetown, Massachusetts. We catch up to them before unexpectedly dropping the anchor next to a blue hole. It was our first time seeing a shark up close. Who knows where that blue hole goes? After our pit stop, we pull into nearby Kemp Bay to do some more snorkeling and try and catch a lobster. <laughs> Rocky, watch out buddy, I got an anchor. I think where we put the anchor though, flopped right into the fan. Who is that, Roxy? Who is that? Yeah, it's Fargo. Curtis checks on the anchor in the beautiful sand before we decide to pump up our inflatable dock and combine forces for a quick dock party behind the boats. Roxy has fun too! Grab the two dinghies, some snorkels, fins, and spears, and set off for lobster. However, we find some moon jellyfish and only one lionfish. We'll have to try again another day. <laughs> another short stay in Kent Bay, and we take off for the large bay of Rock Sound. The wind is finally off our nose a little bit, so we deployed both sails and make it to another sandy spot before taking Roxy into shore at sunset. We're gonna enjoy our little sail, pack up the bay here and set up the engine, which is a nice change. We're gonna go enjoy a nice night at anchor. Trying to get sailing shots. I mean, I know it's not like 35 knots, you know, ripping down wind or anything, but. It's like a 
west end of Lake Erie. We arrive just before sundown and decide to explore the rocky shoreline with Roxy and reflect back on the amazing day we had. Next morning, Roxy and I explore the rocky edges of Rock Sound via paddleboard and get some good swimming exercise in. Well, Roxy does anyway, but it's not all fun as a few errands and projects still need to be completed. Good girl, drop it! So I am on my way to the grocery store. It's not very far, it's like maybe a quarter mile or so. I'm just gonna get a few fresh things and we'll be good to go. First, I head off on a short walk to the grocery store to catch up on some much needed fresh food from what we hear is the largest grocery store in Eleuthera. I long for you so much I can find my way. We got everything here, at least to stay alive. Before we start our next project, Curtis and I decide to find another hole in the earth. Ocean Hole is an inland blue hole which is about a mile walk from our anchorage and approximately some 600 feet deep. We all enjoy the exercise and fishes of this supposed magical place. As it's getting late in the day, we head back towards the boat and meet a few people to chat with along the way. The Bahamian spirit of kindness in Eludra has been unmatched so far. We find ourselves lucky to be in such a lovely place. We noticed our exhaust was emitting more smoke of the wrong color, and so we thought it was an issue with the turbo, which would have been costly. So we explored the engine thoroughly, testing the turbo, checking the water intake, and even taking apart the exhaust elbow. Well, hey there. We are inside the engine compartment. At least my head is. I am trying to remove our exhaust hose to check on our exhaust mixing elbow to make sure it's all clear so we get a little bit better engine performance. Right here. It seemed to like that. We'll call that the karate chop. All right, and if we look in there, it smells like diesel. It looks okay. So one nice little trick about our fancy smartphones is that they're so small and skinny, they actually make great little tools to be able to see into places that you normally can't see in or you can't tilt your head in there. And what I wanna do is I wanna look up inside of this part. But as you can see down here, I can barely fit you know, my hand or a phone down here. There's no way my head's gonna fit down there so I can look up. So our trick is we're gonna use the phone uh, to take a picture. And there you go, lo and behold, that is our exhaust mixing elbow. That actually looks in pretty phenomenal shape. After all that work, it turned out that we needed a new secondary fuel filter, of which we did not have on hand. Luckily, a neighboring boat allowed us to purchase their spare, which happened to be the exact kind we needed. Another example of boaters helping boaters. All is finally well on the boat, and we are exhausted. Get it? Exhaust? Anyway, we decide to head to the nearby restaurant called Frigates to enjoy some delicious fish bites and beers while uploading one of our very first informative videos about our solar panels. We enjoy some songwriter music to end the day.
Stay tuned for next time as we see 40 knots of breeze and take off from the Bahamas to our next adventure. Mama,